Awesome. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. And if, especially if you are logging in later and you're watching the recording, we just want to say thanks for jumping on and balancing hormones and belly fat. I think those are great buzzwords for us wanting to really reset the dial and feel healthier and feel like we are living our best self. And so there's a picture of us. There's actually three of us on this call right now. Who are we? <laughs> and so you can see myself on the left, um, Christine. I've been married almost 28 years. I've got four kids and um, I turned 50 this year. So this is definitely new, near and dear to my heart, the whole belly fat hormones, menopause stage. And Stoney, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm on mute. There we go. Hello, my name is Stoney Eskew, and I am in, in Littleton, and I have a metabolism and VO2 testing company, fiance, dog, all that good stuff. Um, been in the health and fitness industry for about 20 years now, and my whole thing is just to help people get to their goal weight, live ha happy, healthy, and be free from diets. So super excited to be here. Awesome. Catherine, do you want to intro yourself since you're-, you're sure. Yes, we love it. My name is Catherine Rodriguez Rios, I guess you would say, since I haven't changed my uh, married name. Um, I've been married for five years. I'm a nurse, human nurse. I used to be an animal nurse, but the most pertinent is a human, human nurse or registered nurse. I was an ICU nurse for two and a half years. And then now I'm a pre-op nurse, but a total for six years. Um, my passion is you know, health and fitness and just love, you know, people and most importantly, the positivity in uh, the wellness aspect to change people's lives. So. Awesome. And we get to work together. We are really wanting to impact people and just help them look like, feel their best, look their best and just di dial in great. Um, I think nutrition practices, you know, for their body wellness overall. So we want to be part of people's wellness journey and hormones. What got us here tonight, hormones and belly fat is if our hormones are imbalanced, we will feel imbalanced. It impacts our energy levels, brain function, our mood, it will impact our hair and nails and skin and digestion and libido and everything in between. And I think we can all agree to some extent how it impacts us uh, on a daily basis, sometimes our hormones. So symptoms of hormone imbalance. So you can kind of look at this uh, list and go, wow, I can click off and check off several of these. If there's weight and weight fluctuations, PMS, skin issues, um, our temperature changes, uh, urinary tract infections, migraines to headaches, irritability, depression, anxiety, cravings with food, um, just irregular periods, water retention, mood swings, and fatigue. So lots of symptoms when we think, okay, what's going on with our hormones? And I would say the big thing that comes to mind when I needed to start dialing in hormones or helping clients with their hormones is just asking questions of what they're eating. What is their nutrition, nutritional diet looking like? And a lot of times I find out that there's a lot of sugar. There's a lot of sugar in someone's day-to-day -day diet. And that really affects our hormones. So you think about the imbalance that's going on. So two of these hormones right here, insulin and cortisol. So our body is really smart. It knows how to process things, but when we have too much overconsumption of things, it gets out of whack. So you think about the pancreas, it produces a hormone insulin to help manage proper blood sugar levels. But at times our body can become resistant to those signals of insulin when we eat too much sugar. So that overconsumption. And many times I think people don't realize the sugar that is in so many of our foods, especially if we have a diet that is fast food, or we have a diet of um, modified foods or packaged goods, or we eat low fat or diet like foods, just some of those sugars that get in there that we don't really realize. And this can lead to weight gain, hormonal imbalance. Now, cortisol on the other is another hormone and it is affected by sugar intake. So a lot of sugar consumption um, just whether it's in sodas to what we eat, it can impact our adrenal glands, which will halt our metabolism and our cortisol levels will stay high. And then that's when people are just realizing, okay, my midsection is growing. I have this visceral fat that I don't want. So cortisol really that hormone also helps to regulate our body stress response. So 
sugar can just be one way of how we can manage better our hormones if we watch that sugar consumption. Now, stress. I think if, if I asked any, any of us on this call, when was the last time you were stressed? It could have been an hour ago. Could have been a day ago, could have been every day this week. And so stress really can make us sick, sick if it's something that is, we are in this constant um, chronic stress. Uh, our adrenal glands, that fight or flight, it releases these stress hormones, adrenaline, adrenaline and cortisol. I was on the walk with my 14 year old last week and we were talking about this, about no, na- nose breathing and mouth breathing. And we were mentioning like parasympathetic and our sympathetic. And I said, you know, when there's stress, our body just, there is that blood sugar, that, you know, pressure. It's just our eyes get dilated. We kind of just, our heart rate goes. Um, But imagine if we're in that constant state of stress and our cortisol levels never come down. And so many of us, maybe during the pandemic, we lost businesses. We had a lot of um, uncertainty. Um, There was a lot of stress that we just never felt like we got a reprieve from. And so when you think about headaches, accelerating aging, this is what stress can do, heartburn, insomnia, what it does to your blood sugar um, levels. And in that fight or flight, when our um, sympathetic takes over, it really kind of shuts down all the secondary things going on. So our body is just wanting to ward off whatever stress is came into our day or thought right then. And our digestion kind of shuts down. Our immune system gets weakened. Um, so there's so much that plays into us being just that constant kind of sick feeling of our body just not um, responding well. And then again, emotional stress, depression, weight gain, belly fat. So this is thinking that that constant fight or flight. Um, and another thing that I feel like we don't realize that can cause stress, um, oops, I'm admitting someone back in, is hormone disruptors. So you think about, our hormones, um, when we get to that perimenopause, menopause, there's a lot of dips in our hormones. So right now for me, I'm in menopause. And so my estrogen levels are a lot lower than they used to be, you know, 10 years ago, even before that. Now, when my estrogen or my progesterone, I mean, when that dips, my estrogen is high. And so I have a lot of estrogen, maybe it's normal levels, but because it's higher than progesterone, I have a dominance. Now imagine then I'm adding on top of that, a lot of things in my diet that can change my hormones to exposures to toxins in cleaning products, to food, to environment. So a lot of those foreign subject, foreign objects would be called xenoestrogens and they really disrupt my endocrine system. And so they mimic hormones that can really interfere with my body's natural function. So some simple step could be, okay, how can I ditch the stuff that really could be an endocrine disruptor? So really choosing some of those quality products that really don't have any kind of chemicals that are more on the natural side, green, so to speak. And that's, you know, from self-care products to deodorants, to hair products, to, you know, skincare products, all of the above, really thinking about what I'm putting in my body and on my body. So again, going back to that estrogen, my hormones are out of whack. So when I have that estrogen dominance, that's too high, Um, mainly because just my progesterone, I'm not going to have a baby anymore. You know, my body just doesn't need that anymore. Then there could be blood sugar levels change, um, when it's just really too high and I'm not, I'm very imbalanced. You could have these symptoms of depression, yeast infections, bloating, mood swings, weight gain, um, headaches, fibroids. And when it's too low, think about like the mental fog, hot flashes, night sweats, fatigue, insomnia vaginal dryness, osteoporosis, migraine, memory and concentration problems. So some of you, we might go, wow, I can see and check off on both lists. So what do I do? So how do I kind of balance that? And I love this little cartoon, like, because, you know, hot flash and you see the guy that got just all like a popcorn all uh, burned up there and popped out. But symptoms of those, um, it can be, we can start in our, you know, at 35. And so for everyone, it's just different. Everyone might have a different, um, you know, response or symptoms. But I, you know, we want to talk about today of how we can boost that metabolism, what we can do to change in our eating and nutrition and our movement that can really change just um, what these symptoms look like on our body. And that there's positivity, there's something that we can look forward to and not dread aging, but really look forward to feeling our best, even as we age. 
And so I want, um, Stoney, why don't you touch base on this one, balancing hormones with optimal nutrition? And you can share a little bit of your thoughts on this. Yeah, well, I was going to say, um, going back to, you know, what we put on our skin, you had said the other night, um, what was it, 26 seconds of like, after you put something on your skin, boom, it's in your bloodstream. And we think of like those patches and things that we're constantly putting on our, our body that's like, we might not realize that it's actually getting into our bloodstream and then our liver has to process it out. And so it's crazy. It can be quite the load on our um, liver and hormones, but um, balancing hormones with optimal nutrition. Um, yeah, I was just going to chime in on how over the years I've really seen how when we dial in the nutrition and the timing of the meals, um, you know, working out kind of the right intensities, um, it really helps to balance and stabilize everything, your adrenals, cortisol, insulin, all that stuff. So, so much can be done just with your eating and balancing that, that it allows everything else to really balance out. Um, so that's what gets me excited because there's so much we can do with nutrition and then you know, I'm excited to learn more about these great supplements. I'm familiar with GLA. Um, but yeah, if you want to mm -hmm. go over the yeah. other cool ones. No, I love it. And I have taken the menopause balance complex, but I just, this to me is a great list of, okay, so what can I do? The gamma linolenic acid, the GLA really regulating hormones. I took this and even my 16 year old daughter. Now, I think when she was 14, starting her periods, she took this and I tell you, it really helped her not to be so um, witchy. <laughs> and all of us can kind of say that we, it really helped that irritability and we just, it just balanced. It was really great. So to me, these are great natural products than, you know, the prescription ones that we can have that most of them will have some effects. And so I wanted to choose products that really don't have any of those lingering negative um, effects on our bodies. Uh, gentle sleep. Some of it is just being able to sleep and valerian is a really good, you know, main product of just making you um, just giving that gentle sleep for um, just regulating things and sleeping well, because sometimes those hormone fluctuations can keep us awake. So these are just some great, um, I would say options and something that whoever invites you to take a look at this, when you talk about what you're experiencing, we know better just personally what to recommend for each of you. And so this is a picture of me, um, the one on the left, I was in my mid thirties. The one on the right, I was, I think 48 and I changed how I viewed food and how I viewed exercise and I dieted. And I love that I've connected with Stony because I did diet and I didn't know how to eat. I just was afraid of fat. I didn't want to eat certain foods. I just thought it's going to make me fat. Um, I did not feed and fuel my body. So I was probably very low in calories almost a hundred percent of the time. And so my metabolism really slowed down. Um, and I was a runner, I was a triathlete, but I just did not know how to fuel my body. And so fast forward, um, about 10 years ago, I got into strength and conditioning. I got into CrossFit. I started lifting weights. I actually probably eat as much, if not more than my six foot four husband. I just love food. I'm not afraid of food. I have a healthy relationship with food. Um, and I learned a lot about just, you know, when to eat that would be best for me after workouts, balancing my hormones, because I wasn't afraid of eating avocados and oil and, you know, healthy fats. And I learned to build lean muscle. So we wanted to say, you can change your composition. It just takes effort and it takes decision on, um, changing habits. I think for me, it was all about changing habits. And um, so, so Stoney, I want you to touch space on this one too, because I think we talked about this earlier about calories, right? Yeah, totally. And kind of backing up, like, um, you know, I dealing with, you know, dieting since I was, I think in junior high and like all the yo-yo dieting that I did and really it slowed my metabolism down. And um, what I learned too, is that my body needed more fuel and more calories and once I started doing things, I like to say like the right way for my body, um, everything shifted. It's been super easy to maintain. But um, when I was really dialing things in, I was eating as high as 2,100 calories. So it's just crazy that you wouldn't think that you would need that much and you need to eat lower, but you actually need that fuel and your body needs the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats and, and all the you know vitamins and minerals and everything to function properly. And, um, and it's, it's so mentally freeing too, but 
So yeah, so even though with the metabolism and VO2 testing, I do talk a lot about calories. I do love this because it's not all about the calories. You know, you need the right kinds and certain kinds will trigger a fat storing response and certain kinds will trigger a fat releasing response. Um, so yeah, so this is super cool. All right, go ahead. Yeah, no, I love that. Thanks, Stoney. And you're right. Like I, I love fats. I really enjoy eating healthy fats and think about it. You're, there are so many fats that are, there's some hormones and vitamins that are fat soluble. So for order for them to be absorbed in our body, they need that delivery system of the, of the healthy fats. So if we're not eating healthy fats, there are certain hormones, there are certain vitamins and minerals that will not really get carried and absorbed in our system. And then we are deficient. And then we see some repercussions of just being nutrient deficient in some things. So healthy fats, delivery fat soluble nutrients, it's really satiating and very critical to hormone function and metabolism. Um, complex carbs and the word complex that not high glycemic where it really raises our blood sugar really fast, but just a really good steady blood sugar. And you'll find that from like the natural occurring veggies and whole grains in moderation, um, nutrient dense, and even just with good, some complex carbs, um, it helps prevent overeating and protein really is the essential building block of all cells. We need it. We can't make these essential amino acids. Our bodies need it. Um, cell turnover produces hormones and our protein, it cannot be stored. So we must replenish it daily. So you just think about how important really feeding our bodies and fueling our bodies, um, fueling our muscles really will rev um, that metabolism. So it matters what, what you eat and when you eat. So I learned a lot about how to eat and, uh, and just enjoying eating again, which was great. And so just whole fat, not low fat, nutrient dense. So, you know, some people um, talk about intermittent fasting and, and this is where I love that, you know, any of us that invited you to the video, we can just talk about what has been your rhythms, what needs changed, um, you know, how you eat and when you eat. Uh, and sometimes it depends on so many different facets, but typically three to five times a day is great that you're, you're getting some fasting in between meals. Um, you're really kind of igniting some fat burning hormones, whether it's breakfast, um, starting out with, um, protein and oats. I like to pair that protein with something that really kind of satiates, whether it's protein and carbs or protein and fat. Um, like in the morning I'll work out and depending on when I work out is, is when I eat, if I'm working out really early, I don't, I just need a cup of coffee and I'm go work out. And then I come home for a post recovery shake. And depending on if I was doing strength training in an hour and a half from then I need something else. Um, and so really good lean protein for a lunch bootable could be an example, little healthy grains, big salad, dinner, lean protein, veggies, some healthy fats. Um, if you are needing to add some more calories into your diet, because you know, um, I need more fuel. I need based on my body and size and what my goals are. I need some more good nutrient dense calories than a protein shake before you go to bed or a nice snack of protein and carbs can be really, really helpful um, for you. And I didn't mention, but hydrating, hydrating is so key. I think sometimes I think I'm hungry, but truly I'm just thirsty. And if I drink a whole glass of water and if I'm still hungry, then I'm hungry. But sometimes it could be that I just needed a really good, I just needed to hydrate my cells and my cells. Um, boosting metabolism, building lean muscle. I'm going to have Stoney talk about this too, because she is really um, have dialed it in, in um, talking about people's metabolism. Yeah. And I was going to say that, you know, most of the people I see, so I see a lot of people that are stuck, they're frustrated, they're not seeing the results, um, they might be trying certain things. And so I really help to just dial people in um, with the resting metabolism and VO2 tests that I do. And I would say probably 80% of the people that I see just aren't eating enough when they're really, you know, focused and trying to, you know, see those changes. Um, so they need to usually increase calories and work out less intense, which sounds so weird and totally counterintuitive from what we're used to and being, you know, taught growing up and everything. Um, but keeping that lean muscle tissue is so huge, so huge. Very true. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I got to go to Stony and do some, the VO2 and the metabolism. And it was true. I knew that I needed to eat more protein and eat more calories. And so it was just a good confirmation <laughs> that I needed to do that. Um, and so exercise is really key on just getting you to move your body just in that it boosts your mood. It will relieve stress. Uh, sometimes I think we can get into a, 
you know, maybe during COVID for some people, they really found exercise, they found the release, they started going, you know, they were outside in nature, they were walking their dogs, or they were moving and other people really just stayed inside and stayed on the couch. So there was just really two different kinds of camps of people that um, really um, took that time of COVID differently. Um, but exercise activates our hormones. And so even just what um, Stoney was saying, sometimes it's refocusing on what kind of exercise will lead to the better results for me. And so one for me is I realized I needed to have, um, I need to do more, just a little bit more cardio-like as well, you know, coupled with my strength training. And so for some, it might be, I need to focus, like she said, like Stoney said, less intensity, but over a different kind of duration. And that's something that, you know, we can help you guys understand you know, because from person to person, it's going to be a little bit different, but I want to say this too. Sleep is part of the equation of when your muscles will grow, when you eat and when you rest your bodies. And that's really important. So I want to just mention and just touch on just in, even in a sentence that really good deep sleep is crucial a for relieving stress and resetting the hormones and really letting your body and your muscles grow. So, um, if your lifestyle not right now is not um, and, you know, just dialing in better sleep habits, that is something that is part of the equation for you overall. Um, lean protein, as we talked about, just matters for belly fat. And so more, I think most women that clients that I had, we just don't get enough protein. And so introducing a really good protein source that has all the essential amino acids is very important. And so the one that we love and we've tried, um, the Shackley Life Shake, it really has a good spectrum of all nine essential amino acids. So this is what your body cannot make these. You need these essential amino acids from your diet. And the leucine in particular really is proven to build that lean muscle, burn the fat and improve that metabolism. So with 20 grams of protein, low sugar content, high fiber, non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, um, quality does matter. And again, the protein is so important for making enzymes, hormones, repairing tissue, stabilizing your blood sugar and improving mood. And I really find that if you're eating protein in the morning, it really sets your body for the day. If you don't have protein until later in the day, your, your body's just really craving it. It wants it, it needs it. So really listening to your body, this is a great way to start the morning, um, getting some really good lean protein in. And I, I did a I did a Zoom last week with a friend on protein, and we talked about there's a lot of compromising proteins on the market. And if you were to Google Consumer Reports, there's even um, you know organic vegan proteins that have been on the list of finding you know lead, um, you know all some of these heavy metals and contaminants. So you really want to do your due diligence and find a source that really is that's tested for harmful harmful contaminants that has a standard that really tests beyond organic. So in the finished product, before it gets put into a canister or whatever, it's truly, um, it's really, again, tested to make sure there's nothing harmful. And so that's what I love about this protein, that it really goes beyond the FDA protocols, beyond the pharmacopoeia protocols, and it really has a lot of um, high quality stuff and things that you don't need it as well. So you can read on here, just what are the, the, just the high points of this protein, um, and the products. And so going back to what to eat, counting macros. So for me, when I went from one picture to the, when I shared my picture of my two selves over there, uh, in the previous slide, I, I spent a couple of days and just Google and just logged in. What do I eat? Because if you don't know what calories are coming in, you have no idea how to tweak it. You have no idea that you need more carbs or you need less carbs or you need more protein and how much. So, um, I, because I had, uh, an eating disorder in college and I was an anorexic, um, food was something I could control. And so for me, I really can't go too long counting macros because I just don't want to limit myself and I don't want to get too obsessed with it. So if I count macros, it's really only, um, okay, we got 10 minutes. It's really only a way. Oh, Goodness. Hold on. <laughs> I just lost it. Hold on. Do you guys see this? Not yet. Man. Okay, here we go. We can still see you. Oh, now, oh, now yeah. I lost it. 
Okay, so yeah, now you guys can see it again, counting macros. Uh, yeah. Can you see the counting macros? Yes, okay. Um, so anyway, I'll be quick about this. It was an eye opener. It really helped me to know what to add into my diet and what to change. So that for me was something of a healthful tool, not something to get obsessed by. And so I just really want to say that, um, you know, I aim for progress, not perfection. So I really want us to grow in that and know that uh, this is just a good snapshot. It's a really good, helpful tool for me. And so my fitness pal can be an example. It's a free app and I was able to track, you know, I had no idea. And this is what I helped to use for clients for a couple of days, just to really see how much protein, like I said, most women are not getting enough protein. And you can see in the pie chart, this was an example of um, just how much carbs are coming in, how much fat and how much protein. It's really helpful um, because based on your goals of how you work out, um, how old you are, what your daily energy expenditure is, um, your basal or your resting metabolic rate will definitely deter, you know, um, differ on what calories your body needs to sustain and to feed and refuel and to grow. Um, Stoney, do you want to add anything on this one? Uh, the only thing is, um, I mean, sometimes you can look at this and be like, oh my God, it's going to take so much work. It's like, but it's not, it's like, it's pretty easy once you can just track it and then learn some adjustments. It's super easy. So don't get overwhelmed by all this information <laughs> and tracking and all that stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I tell clients if they feel overwhelmed, I'm like, just write down two days worth of, you know, what you eat. And that just gives me even a ballpark. I, I kind of already can look at and go, oh, okay. We need to add a lot more calories. You're not eating enough period or you're not eating enough protein. So even just looking at someone's, you know, email or text back to me on what they're eating, I can give them a good um, recommendation for where to go from there, which is really helpful. And I love this gal, Melody. She is a manager at a hairstylist. And so she just got into the habit of not eating breakfast, walking out the door, cutting hair. And, you know, you work for kind of like you work for money. So it's like, she would skip lunch even, and then just be famished in the afternoon. And so when she did the prove it challenge, which I'll touch on in a second, she shared this. I experienced energy, mental clarity, stamina. I was productive all day long. I'm not having sugar cravings, no coffee cravings, not needing anything to help me get through till the end of the day. I used to have habits of eating no breakfast. I thought we ate healthy. Now I have habits of making a shake every morning consistency. And it was really fun just to see all the changes that happened with her. Um, now, if you're on this and you're viewing it, you can pause, but if you're on this, you can, you know, take a, a quick, um, picture of this, but this also too. So some of our hormones and some of our, just our fluctuations can be from where's our stress index, where's our hormonal panel. Maybe we need a panel. Maybe we need some good testing, um, thyroid, um, blood sugar. So this is something that if you see a naturopath or a doctor that you can ask for just to check some levels, this is some great helpful lab tests that can be done to really see what other changes could be made specifically for you when you're, you're feeling stuck and, um, and those fluctuations just are going bonkers and you need some extra help. So this is a great little um, assessment and tool to look at as well. And as we're finishing up this call and we'll have a few minutes for Q and A is, what we love to offer is just personal one-on-one, -on -one, just some free schedule, a free follow-up call with the person that invited you on this quick, you know, on this zoom that many of us have done the prove it challenge. To me, it's something that I love recommending to clients. It's a great jump start to really tackling, to starting out with a seven day cleanse of having some really carefully selected supplements to help your body detox. Like Stoney mentioned, when we are overconsumed with sugar and with toxins and, a lot of stress, our liver cannot keep up and it becomes very sluggish and we just can't remove and detox the things that are going on. And so we see the ill effects of that. So the Prove It Challenge is a great kit that I love and we coach people through. We give them great recipes. There is a personalized myology assessment that you can do for free and it gives you an idea of where you're at uh, in your health assessment and it gives you some recommendations and tells you why. Um, and then you get 30 days of a protein shake, um, that we shared about earlier. So it's just a great, really good tool to start up with. And I love this little avocado. Cause now I'm, I love avocados. 
but I totally regret eating healthy today, said no one ever. And I think that is our passion. We want to help people really jumpstart healthier habits to feel their best, um, to really feel like they're in their optimal health, not just kind of hovering around average and normal, but really feeling like their optimal health. And, um, and we want to help you dial that in. So for, for you in a recap, you could, you know, some of the steps you could take is writing down a food log and just seeing what's going in, what's coming in, what calories you're coming in. Maybe you need to set an appointment with Stoney and go visit her and do her testing, which will be so helpful. Um, take the free myology assessment with us that, you know, invited you and really talk about, let's go over what was recommended and why plan a follow-up call. Um, honestly, join us in the Prove It Challenge. We have someone starting almost every week. It's great. And I think, Stoney, you're on day four, <laughs> right? Yeah. Catherine and I have done it. Um, so we would love to help you in on that one as well. And we really get to work from anywhere. Most of us have other jobs too, but part of our Shackley story is we get to really help people dial in healthier habits and and really create a wellness business that really can touch lives and really make a difference. And that's what we wanna do. So even if this is something that even intrigues you to lean in, to wanna say, okay, what are you guys doing? Like, I, I wanna learn more about that. Um, the wellness business side, you know, that's something we'd love to be, we'd love to answer questions too. So I'm gonna stop share. And I know we've got some faces on here and we've got like a few minutes left. And honestly, if we need more time, I can reset my, um, got like three minutes left, but I can, um, you know, redo this, or you can reach out to the person that invited you and we can have a follow-up call. So Mary, any questions or any, um, any thoughts that you have? Maybe I can unmute you. Let's see. Or Catherine, what did you think? Any thoughts? I was just going to say something real quick. Um, just that this, the whole prove it challenge has just been so easy to like plug people into. It's just like the easiest thing to reset. Boom, you don't have to think about anything. And then you can maintain from there without craving. And that's mm -hmm. the hardest part, I feel like. That's All right, excellent. that's it. Let's go for it, Catherine. That's excellent. I feel the same way. Like, I think, you know, I came, I came across like thinking, Oh my God, this, I'm, I'm a protein person. I need to eat protein. So it, it really opened my eyes to like, you know, the cravings like, Oh wow. I don't have to have coffee to like live, you know, like it's, I, I gotta say that it's the best choice that I've done so far. And, um, you know, with, with all this being said, like with your micronutrients and all that stuff, it makes sense. You know, like I'm going to start doing that as well. Um, putting like a log together to see what, because I feel that I am hungrier now more at, like when I come home, cause I do do a shake in the morning and then, um, at night it's like I eat dinner and I need something else. So I have a shake. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So Mary, if you want to say something, and if this happens to end and, and bug off, I'm going to reach out to you as well. Okay. So in case this like closes on me in the next few seconds, but Mary, any words? Any thoughts? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We can hear you now. You can't hear me. You can't see me. <laughs> um, sorry. No. So yeah, I want to reach out with you. And so I'm, I'm anxious. I feel like I've had a bad six months. I was really good. I was zooming eight, nine times a week. I weighed all my food, got COVID the end of December and things just fell apart. So mm -hmm. I will reach out. Um, so, okay. Awesome. Yes. Thanks for sharing. And thanks for jumping on. I'm glad I was telling the girls like, you just responded to social media to my post. So, you know, you never know who's watching and who's looking. I mean, that just 